Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really well and welcome to another reading vlog. We are starting off a new reading vlog and we are continuing my series of reading new releases for the month. So in this vlog, I'll be reading three brand new releases that are coming out or have already come out in June. And I'm really excited about it. I love doing this little series. I love my backlist, but I love my new releases. And June has had a few books that I have been having to really put off reading to save for this video. I mean, I don't have to, no one's forcing me, but that was the decision I made. So I'm glad that I'm gonna get to read them now. So let's talk about the books that we're gonna read in this vlog. So the first one is one of the most anticipated releases of the year for me, like probably in my top two, I think my most anticipated release was the Country of Others by Leila Slomani, which I read in last week's vlog, which I shall link down below if you haven't watched it. But the second one was Animal by Lisa Tadeo. I don't really like this cover though, it kind of scares me. Um, so I read Three Women by Lisa Tadeo last year, which is which was a non-fiction book and it was one of my favourite books of the year. I absolutely adored it. And this is Lisa Tadeo's first novel, Animal, comes out summer 2021. I'm pretty sure it's June. Hopefully it's June, otherwise I've ruined this whole video. Yeah, I was desperate. To read this book i still am but i have heard very very mixed things about this book on instagram a few people have already read it and really hated it um i think hannah dnf'd it so that makes me a little bit nervous but i am still gonna give it my all give it a go because like i say very highly anticipated this is kind of like a quite like a dark feministy book i believe um it's about a woman called joan who it says i drive i drove myself out of new york city where a man shot himself in front of me he did it in a restaurant where i was having dinner with another man another married man do you see how this is going but i always wasn't that way i wasn't always that way um yeah i think it's gonna be dark i think it's gonna be fast paced i'm really really hoping that i do love it i mean i loved her writing in three women so much her prose i thought was beautiful um so yeah we're gonna be reading this one we also have the startup wife by tahima anam i've had this book since like i want to say january or february and i love the cover isn't it so beautiful i decided to save it for this video and i'm really excited to read this this is kind of about like women in tech um and it says halfway through her phd asha has her future all mapped out then a chance meeting and a whirlwind romance with her old high school crush changes everything and it's about like an app that gets really popular i think this is going to be a little bit more like light-hearted and fun like clearly there's a romance in it sounds like it's going to be pretty plotty um but also women in tech you know it's like a big issue and so i'm imagining it's going to be like a smart thinking book it's blurbed by Camilla shamsi who i absolutely love and yeah i've been hearing amazing things about this so i'm excited to read this one and then finally um i don't actually have this book yet because i had it on pre-order and it's arriving on thursday today is tuesday so probably gonna be the last one that i read and that is the maidens by alex michaelides i loved the silent patient another one that's a little bit controversial people don't like it but i really really enjoyed it um it was just a really fun thriller i read it a couple of years ago and i like the twist i like the pacing i'm always on the lookout for like a new thriller author who i think is i guess like a bit of the moment and doing exciting things and the maiden sounds brilliant because it's like a dark academia book apparently it has a big twist in i mean sometimes i think if you look for the twist you ruin it so i'm not going to look for the twist i'm just going to enjoy it but i think this is going to be a total romp um i love reading like really anticipated like zeitgeisty thrillers and getting on the hype with everyone so yeah i'm really really excited for this week i think these books are going to be a lot of fun kind of quite fast paced quite escapist nothing too heavy for the brain hopefully which i can appreciate it's really nice weather this week it's tuesday today i have a fun rest of the week plans um with various things and yeah i'm excited to get into it and bring you avec moi so yeah as i say it's tuesday i've just finished work um the sun can't really decide if it wants to come out or not um i wish it would so i could sit in the garden and read um but we will see i think that the first book i'm going to pick up is animal just because it's my most anticipated it's my most concerning that i won't like it um so i just think let's dive straight into animal so yeah um alex should be home oh is this the sun did it hear me um yeah al should be home in like an hour so i'm going to do a little bit of reading before he comes home i think 
and yeah my downstairs neighbor so we don't have the front garden like we have a yard at the back but it loses the sun after half three but my downstairs neighbor who has the front garden has gone to Cornwall for three weeks and very kindly said that we can use it in her absence which is absolutely lovely of her especially when the weather's been so amazing so I might I might try and I mean I'm literally getting blinded go and sit out there um and start reading animal I am depraved, I hope you like me. Ooh, I hope I do too. The sun is out, the guns are not out, and I'm gonna read some of this book. Hello, so I've just thrown on uh, some mascara and some jeans because Alex got a promotion today. Uh, so we're going for drinks and maybe some food. I'm quite hungry, but I'm trying to be healthy, but my lifestyle, you know, when it's like socialize or be healthy, it's a tough one. I also have been reading Animal and I am like 80, 80, 90 pages in, and it's interesting. Wait, the lighting's really bad here, let me move you. Yeah, so it's interesting. I feel like this book is so easy to read for me. Like, I'm gonna go through it really quickly. I'm super compelled and engaged. Um, I feel like this is just the sort of book that I was constantly wanting to read like a couple of years ago, and I'm mean, still really enjoying it. But it's that kind of contemporary female-led, um, quite fast paced, a little bit salacious, a little bit thrillery kind of book that, yeah, just used to be like my favorite thing and still enjoy it, but I'm interested to see where Lisa today will go with it because I'm not necessarily finding it as beautiful, but maybe as like sharp in terms of the prose or as mm, emotionally intelligent as Three Women thus far. I mean, I loved Three Women, I know a lot of people didn't, but. Yeah, so we're following this woman called Joan, who is in her late 30s. She is fairly troubled. Um, she has a lot of kind of ill-advised relationships with men. She very much like uses her sexuality. And at the start of the novel, a man she's been having an affair with kills himself in front of her, like in a bar. She's on a date with another man and he comes in and shoots himself. And so she decides to go to Los Angeles because she's following this woman called Alice. And like, we don't really know who Alice is, only that she's a bit younger than Joan, um, kind of a celebrity yoga instructor and that there's something to do with her family. So the narrator talks a lot about her parents who died when she was young. She talks a lot about how she's seen all this trauma in her life and that she has just got to a place where she kind of doesn't really have anyone and she uses men for money and she's very like aware of her sexuality and she also kind of narrates it to a character who you assume i mean like i say i'm not that far in and you got this from way earlier so i don't think it's a spoiler like is a child but you don't know if like has she actually had a child or is she just imagining this child that she wants um and yeah so she's in la but she kind of i think she's referenced that she's going to kill someone so it is that like fast paced kind of thrillery vibe. And like I say, I'm enjoying it. I'm reading it really quickly. I do think that Lisa Tadeo's writing prowess is coming out when she's talking about like evoking the scenery of California, of like the canyon um, and that kind of the heat and the surroundings. But I'm just not like yet 100% sold on this narration style. Um, it feels like it's trying quite hard or at least Joan is trying quite hard to be this like edgy man-eating woman who's very troubled and she keeps kind of like referring to small things as rapes which I don't know I'm finding like a little bit odd I thought that Lisa today was super nuanced in the way that she talked about um kind of male violence female sexuality in three women and I'm not sure how this is going to play out but I'm definitely not writing it off yet like I say I'm enjoying it it's fast-paced it's fun I am interested to see where it goes and if it's how it's going to toe that line between like provocative salacious and like a little bit more 3D maybe but yeah interested to see where it goes and I'm also interested to see where I'm going to go now to get myself a glass of wine. If you watched my like recent favourites video I'm going to put on my new bag, my new Burks, love and life um, and interestingly not that anyone asked so we're going camping on Saturday to Bambra and my friend was like, you know, Harrison Ford is filming the new Indiana Jones in Bambra. And I was like, did not know that. And then today he's been at the Ship's Cat, which is a pub that's like, I mean, I've been there before. I vlogged it on like the Fish Key, which is near us. So I wonder what Harrison's doing tonight. Maybe I'll see him in, in the mooth. That would be, that'd be fun. But yeah, let's go get some wine and dinner. Cheers to someone getting promoted. At the actual state of these mussels, got some tartar crabass, got some Thai chicken, some fries. Mm. 
Yeah, keep tapping it, keep tapping it, keep tapping it. Keep tapping it. Oh. Just doing a little quiz at the pub. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Uh, yes, it was. Use the fastest finger. Yeah, Robson Green, fastest finger, 0 0.4 seconds. Good. <clears throat> nope, first, first time I've spoken today. Good morning. Have I got a farmer tan line? A little bit. I feel like I need to give some context for the clip that I probably just put in where I'm like getting very excited at an app on my phone. Basically, we went for dinner last night, as you saw, which was lovely. And then we ended up going to the pub and Alex's dad came and there was like a, on the screen, like a pub quiz happening, but it was like a virtual pub quiz. So you just got the app and it was all like pre-recorded and it was like a multiple choice or one of those where you just have to pick like the first letter of the answer. And there was like a fastest finger first thing. So if you got it right and you were the quickest, your name came up on the screen. So I picked our team name and I hadn't told Al and his dad what it was. And I was like, well, we'll have to get one right. And I mean, I, it was a football quiz. I like football. I have no interest in it really. I know nothing about football in, that would be useful in terms of trivia, but I am aggressively competitive and therefore got very into the quiz, got very stressed that we weren't ever gonna get anything right. But then the like football music round came in and we absolutely smashed it. And our name did go up on the screen, our team name, which was Robson Green, but like it's felt my way. So that was what that was. I'm not sure how much sense it would make. Um, dinner was so tasty. It was like mussels, which I just love mussels so much and fries and then this like Thai chicken that they do, which is like, it's like a Penang basically, but like a bit, sp oh my God, it's just delicious. And then the place we went to eat, actually Alex used to work there. And so the like manager was someone he used to work with. And so at the end she sent us over like a massive bit of chocolate cake. It was chocolate brownie actually um, with ice cream, which was funny because we'd been like, right, we're not gonna get dessert because we're both trying to be healthy and like we just don't need it. Like, we've had a delicious dinner. Let's not take it too far. And then, the brownie arrived, which just shows that, you know, anytime I try and have willpower and not get food, the universe says, get the brownie. So yeah, I'm wearing this strappy top because it's gonna be 23 degrees today, according to the weather. It already looks gorgeous. And whilst I do have to sit inside on my computer for most of the morning, as soon as that lunchtime hits, I'll be out in the garden and I'll be reading Animal by Lisa today because I didn't get a chance to read any more of it last night, but I am um, I'm very keen to continue reading it. So I will come back to you at lunchtime when I've read more of Animal. It is so hot today. The sun's just gone behind a cloud, thankfully. Um, I literally like have freshly washed hair that is now just extremely sweaty. But yeah, I've just been out here for lunch reading um, Animal. And I'm now like 175 pages in and I'm definitely enjoying it a lot more. Um, I like the way the plot is playing out with a few things with Joan's relationship with this woman who she's kind of gone to find and we're not sure why. And now they're kind of friends and learning more about her past, her past relationships with these men that have kind of brought her to this point and also about her family but we haven't got too many answers about that yet i feel like that's gonna be the big sort of mystery of the novel and yeah it's just very eerie like there's all these kind of suggestions of her killing someone or like thinking about killing someone in the future i don't think she's done it yet um there's an interesting dynamic going on with an older man who she kind of lives on the same like plot of land as and who has uh, dementia and yeah I think it's saying a lot of really interesting things about um, female sexuality, about male violence, about kind of the relationships between men and women especially in terms of like power and power balances and also like I say fast paced um, gripping so yes I am enjoying it. My lunch is now over so I need to go back to work inside which is sad although too fair. I could use a cool down. Hello, so I have made myself presentable. Unfortunately, it's so hot because, because I have to film an event for the London Book Fair because of my award that I won. So that is really, really exciting. Obviously, like I'm really pleased still and it's nice to do this event with the other guys who won the um, 
Trailblazer Awards, but it is the hottest day of the year. I am sweating. Um, I have to sit here, obviously, because that's where, she's using my fan, um, oh, because that's where my computer is, but the sun is streaming in. I've had to shut the blinds. Um, I'm wearing like a nice top, but I do just have shorts on underneath because I'm literally so freaking hot. Um, this is like probably wasn't the best top because you know synthetic materials um alex has gone to get his vaccine we're gonna be a vaccinated household soon i'm so excited i'm going on monday for mine um i can't wait so yeah he's gone out to do that now um and i am doing my event in about 45 minutes i have to go over my notes because they've sent over like questions that they're gonna ask um they wanted you to like prepare stuff and then if i have time i might try and read a little bit more of animal um but yeah just kind of depends on how my prep goes for this so that's what i'm gonna do now my event is done i got changed out of my like fancy synthetic top i am so sweaty it's not even funny um yeah went really well the other girls are really nice um and it's going up i think they're putting it out in like june um but yeah i'm gonna go sit outside now because it's still freaking so warm Alexander, how do you feel now that you've been vaccinated? Fine, absolutely fine. Well, that's live from Alex there for your groundbreaking reporting. Yeah, I'm gonna go read Animal. Um, I got to the 200 page mark before my event and I am in it. I'm hooked, I'm gripped. I wanna keep reading it. I don't know about you, but we're having a barbecue. Well, we're barbecuing some pork steaks to have. Yeah, so warm outside, cranked up the barbie. And we're gonna have some food. I am man. I barbecue. Mmm. Oh my god, they look so good. Mm. Look how good this looks. Can't can't linger because I'll get demonetized, but mmm. Just in the yard and uh had our little barbecue it was very nice and my sister came around and she is now gonna tell us about a book against her will. So Liv, what you've been drinking? I mean, <laughs> what have you been reading? So I've been reading Will and Testament by that author. It's translated, it's Norwegian. For mm -hmm. once, Grace wasn't my book pin. Yeah, it wasn't me. This is actually my boyfriend who gave me it and I'm like that far through. Like halfway? Just under. Enjoying it? I am enjoying What's it. What's it about? It's about this woman. She's like mid 50, she has adult children and it's basically, a dispute amongst their family about inheritance her parents are older and like it's an inheritance dispute but it's bringing up loads of like things about her childhood she we don't know quite what but she has very like dark things in her childhood she could contact with her family okay and it's just about that. is it set in Norway yeah would you recommend it I mean obviously I haven't finished it I yet haven't but... Finished it, but yeah I would because at the minute I'm like yeah I want to know more about this I like the like characters want to know more about them the dynamics nice yeah. well if it ends up being good perhaps i will read it um but yeah i feel a bit jealous that you know she's got a book that isn't from me but <laughs> we move we move past it um and yeah so we're just in the garden should i pan to alex he, he does not <laughs> want to be on film um but yeah we're just enjoying our summer nights and i've only got like 30 pages left of animals so i'll let you know when i finish it Good morrow to you all. Uh, happy Thursday. I had a great sleep last night. Um, apart from when at 4.30 a.m. the doorbell went, that was spooky. Um, and if you ever heard my doorbell, which it does often go off in videos, it's quite an intense um, noise. So I mean, Alex woke up and it, to be fair, it was light. Obviously the mornings are so light. I was like, thought it must be seven. I don't know, Al usually gets up about just after seven, I was like, oh, it must be like seven. Is it delivery? Like, then I checked my phone and I was like, it's 4.30 a.m. Um, and so we have like video doorbells. So he looked and he was like, it doesn't look like there's anyone out there. I mean, if it had been dark, I would have actually like shit my pants. Um, and he was like, oh, maybe it was like the wind. I mean, not his best theory, but you know, I didn't have any and it was half four in the morning. So I'm like, okay, go back to sleep. I couldn't get back to sleep. So I was like trying, trying for ages, couldn't, got to about, 5.30 and I was like, okay, I think I'm dr like drifting back off. 5.45 comes, doorbell again. So this time I got up, looked, was nothing there. And I was just like, what the hell? It was so weird and annoying. Cause then I was like, now I'm up again. And then it happened again at 6 a.m. So at that point, Alex went and like disabled the system basically. Um, so I didn't fall back asleep to like half six. And then I woke up at like 
literally 10 past 8, like so tired. So that was uh, my fun night. I finished reading Animal last night and I liked it, but I don't know, maybe disappointed is not the right word. I think I just had such high hopes for this book. I had such high expectations off of the back of how much I loved Three Women. And so I do think I was holding this book to like a really, really high standard and it just didn't quite come together for me. I think there's like a lot of stuff in here that I really, really liked and like a lot of great elements, but the like cohesion, like everything coming together, like in a novel, it didn't fully work for me in the way I would have liked it to, which is such a shame. As I've said throughout, you know, super readable, right? Very compelling. And I think like Lisa today was a brilliant writer. I think it's really well written and I think her character work was good, specifically about Joan. So I think for me, the parts of the books that I loved, like I loved the setting. I loved the idea of Joan moving to the canyon and living in this house um, where there's all these kind of other people living on the property. I'm not sure if I mentioned that like in their own different homes or trailers, or whatever. And I thought that was a really, really interesting setup. And then I loved just having her slowly reflect upon these relationships that she's had in her life that have kind of brought her to this point all of them kind of difficult um in different ways and learning more about like why she is like how she is if that makes sense like why she is who she is and the kind of legacy of male violence that's followed her around and i think this book is kind of like not necessarily proposing to have all the answers in terms of the way that like how you how you deal with that right like how as a woman do you reclaim power and you know and your sexuality and what's the best way to do it I think there was a lot of really interesting stuff in there for me the where it fell down a little bit was more like the plottier aspect so I didn't really like the character of Alice at all who's this woman who she's going to meet she just wasn't particularly believable for me towards the end I think it lost a little bit of its tension and intrigue and I think potentially this book relied a little bit too much on like foreshadowing big events so like why who is Alice to her like why is she trying to find her what happened to her parents who is this person that she keeps having this like premonition that she's going to kill I think if those things had just happened without necessarily so much foreboding I would have liked it because you know they are interesting and dark but I think when you're like constantly setting up for things to like come to a head or happen it just didn't really blow me away like that when it did all come together it, I didn't feel like it was something I hadn't read before and I didn't like I say because of like a few character things fully believe it so I still enjoyed it like I say I'm holding it to a super super high standard I'd probably give this like a 3.5 um I really thought it was gonna be a five star so I am a little bit disappointed but I mean yeah I'm keen to hear what other people think about this if you have read it it's yeah Thursday morning so I'm gonna go to work and then on my lunchtime the weather's still beautiful I'm gonna pick up the startup wife which I'm really looking forward to I just watched Hannah's wrap up and she was raving about it and yeah it's made me excited hello so I've now finished work um there's a lot of noise in my street obviously most of it's my doorbell but there's all building works going on um yeah on my lunch break i picked up the startup wife and i've actually read quite a lot of it like 125 pages i was flying through it um and i'm really enjoying it it's definitely like an interesting feels like quite a fresh story for me basically we're following a woman called asha who um is doing her phd at mit in america in like computer engineering kind of thing like she's interested in looking at how you would program empathy into ai and then she meets this man who she went to school with and always like fancied now like he's an adult and he has a weird job so he kind of creates non-religious ceremonies for people like baptisms you know funerals weddings that are really catered to them and kind of a sense of spirituality but that's totally detached from any kind of organized religion or it can be like i mean he can do organized religion as well but he's really interested in like ideas of kind of i guess ritual and community outside of organized religion so they meet whirlwind romance get married and then they decide to set up a business which is an app where basically you put in your interests and then it offers you your own kind of like religion so you could put it in for like a ceremony or it'll build this like community of people who really value the same things as you whether that's just like um like popular culture and stuff but like this idea of yeah trying to create religion that's detached from religion but that gives people that sense of 
solidarity that sense of safety so they're quite like big ideas right i don't read a lot about like tech stuff because i find it quite confusing and i do i'm very interested in reading about religion and like i say it's hard even to sum it up the way that the book's looking at like what is religion without uh, god i guess um but although it's tackling big things it reads like really really easily it's quite fun because it's this, like young couple and their best friend who they go into business with and startup culture so they kind of work in an office with other startups and it's kind of like funny and a little bit irreverent but definitely interesting um and at the minute like things are going well but i'm sure some stuff's gonna come up uh but yeah we'll see i am enjoying it it's really really interesting fresh fun easy to read so tonight matthew i am going to bongos bingo not sure if that's a thing outside of the uk um but it's basically like bingo but also like a night out so it's very like uh dancey although obviously I didn't, we're not allowed to dance because covid will be dancing sat down but like they play music and they play like games and you win like ridiculous things um and it's like obviously like a night out like drinky fun um so yeah i'm going to that tonight i'm really excited i've been to bongo's bingo once before had a whale of time um the first time i was ever meant to go was actually when i fell down the stairs and knocked out half of this tooth so i didn't even make it out of the house that night though but hopefully that won't happen again so i am going to get ready to go out um and then i should have a little bit more time before i have to leave to get the metro where i can continue reading startup wife but i better get a wriggle on um because i need to leave in like an hour and a quarter and i want to put makeup on might even curl my hair i'm crazy right um what a diet coke because you know what is it take a break or is that a kit kat what does what's the diet coke slogan who knows? Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Potentially speak to you before I go to Bongo's. Potentially I'll fill you in on Startup Wife again in the morning. Okay, so I am running too late to update you on the Startup Wife. Who's shocked? No one. Um, but I'm about to go out to Bongo's Bingo. It's so warm and I'm literally wearing black jeans and a black top because that is all I can be bothered to do at the moment. Not feeling great about myself. Black never fails. So yeah, let's go to do some bingo i'm really hoping that i win the henry hoover that they always give away because we really need a hoover so keep your fingers crossed for me good morning i feel like i'm always sat on the floor um uh it's friday happy friday uh i had such a good time last night at bongo's bingo um i think i've managed to film about like three uh three seconds of clips but yeah it was so fun didn't win anything really wanted to win henry hoover i didn't i would have settled for the life-size cardboard cutout of danny devito but unfortunately it was not in the stars for me i ended up absolutely covered in the red pen that you use to mark your books because i mean why wouldn't your friends just draw over your face with it um so yeah i have been working this morning but now i'm going into town to get my nails dude they're very um grown out but they are getting quite long again and i'm not really sure what color i want to go i was thinking maybe like a purple or an orange but we will see i have also needed to tell you about the startup wife because i got to i want to say page 210 211 yeah yesterday um but didn't have time to update you and i'm still really really enjoying it um it's definitely getting to the point you know it's one of those classic like arc stories so they set up this business and it was all going great but now we're seeing how it's potentially things are still going well but changing like her relationship with her husband very much so but also kind of bringing questions to the fore for her about what it means to like be a woman in business um to be a, like a woman from an ethnic minority background because she's so the author is bangladeshi and the main character's parents are from bangladesh and yeah i'm finding that really really interesting kind of interrogating what it means to be a woman in a predominantly male and a very kind of like aggressive money business focused technology focused world i think it's doing some interesting things with that with a couple of other characters who she meets and again not really necessarily coming down on aside about it just sort of exploring those issues um and it's just really like easy to read i really like this relationship with her and her husband and then this other guy and the way they're all changing i definitely have a lot of sympathy for asha um i don't really like her husband i think he's kind of low-key trash but we'll see how that shakes out but yeah i'm really enjoying like there seems to be like a little bit of suspense almost because i just don't know if it's going to be like a happy ending or if it's going to be a bit more of a like yeah 
men will men will take everything that you've put the work into uh, and claim it so yes i will take this with me uh, 90 pages left so i should hopefully get it finished um maybe on the train then on the train back but it's just a very like breezy easy to read book that's also very smart and yeah go into town now and get my nails as did very happy that it is a friday hello i am home and i got my nails done here they are this nice yellow color very summery very fun i love them um and yeah just had a little mooch around town got greg's has to be done and uh, i got a chicken bake because they are my favorite and i have just been sitting in the yard because it's nice and sunny um and i finished reading the startup wife yeah i finished reading the startup wife and i really enjoyed this book i think it's a really good story i liked the direction that the plot went um it had a little bit of like not darkness but like some good like action towards the end some good like resolution it was just like a pleasure to read really and i thought it was paced really really well kept you interested and like i say i think it's looking at a lot of kind of like really big interesting issues like not only around like technology um and you know the responsibility that companies have i guess um to people who use their technologies in the way that you know like the morals um of your vision when you start something up and then the reality of like living in a capitalist society and having to make over make a profit like how they don't necessarily match up all the ways that you can run into problems obviously about like women in the industry that's like a massive part of this book asher i guess like experiencing what it's kind of like um in the business world for women often even when she thinks you know like it's going to be absolutely fine because i'm with my husband um definitely i really can't talk i don't know why definitely some really interesting stuff around religion and like this idea of a sense of community that's adrift from god um i think that's a really interesting idea it's definitely something i've thought about in terms of like i don't agree with organized religion at all but then when i think of like older people in my life who in their final years well for all of their life but particularly in their final years like that was their main source of community and of, of feeling okay and then I always get a bit conflicted because I really hate when people like say you're stupid if you're religious like anything like that even though I don't really particularly agree with organized religion so like my pet hates why I hate Ricky Gervais um yeah and then also I quite like the way she was playing with you know okay we're creating this sense of community sense of rituals without a god but then maybe like humans predisposition to be constantly looking for a god looking for that one person that they can put all this belief in looking for someone who will save them even as they're saying oh i don't believe in religious you know i don't really conform to religion which is why i'm using this app so yeah really enjoyed it definitely would recommend it i think a lot of people would like this one easy to read well written fun and smart speaking of women in tech i just put a new sim card in my phone um with the had to do the little clicky thing had to request a pack code so i kind of can relate to asha um because i can't get signal out here like at all um well i couldn't previously and the wi-fi doesn't stretch out here and it was driving me mad like i'm spending so much time in the yard at the minute and i'm just like completely uncontactable um so i switched to smarty which i'd never heard of but when my friend was in the yard she had signal so i was like why are you with her and it's 10 pounds for 30 gigabytes of data i think that's pretty good so i've done that and now i'm going to start my third book because i'm just outside it's a friday it's sunny it's glorious and i want to read and i literally like only had about 10 pages left of the startup wife because i read it on the train so yesterday the third book arrived for this video which is the maidens by alex michaelidis and i'm so excited i've said it once i'll say it again i'm on a thriller hype at the minute um and this just sounds like it's going to be like so unput downable and just i don't know like so carefree easy to read like gripping thrilling i'm very excited about it so that's what i'm gonna do now i mean as if i don't already talk with my hands now that i've got these yellow nails i'm literally like yeah gonna see you see you later rock on dina shaka peace anyway hello so i have been reading the maidens by my michael alexidas no alex michaelidas um and i'm 150 pages in because it's just such a like quick engrossing read um we're following a woman called mariana who is a therapist she does like mainly group therapy um, and she's like in her late 30s, lives in London, and she, the year before, lost her husband, who was like the love of her life. They didn't have any children, um, and she's like really grieving. 
and at the start of the novel she's in group therapy and there's this one guy who's like being a bit strange and obsessive about her but then her niece calls her Zoe who is 19 studying at Cambridge and Zoe's parents died in a car crash so Mariana and Sebastian who was Mariana's husband have kind of been like her only family um and yeah she's studying at Cambridge and a woman like a young woman has been found dead very violently like stabbed to death and stabbed in the face and it turns out to be Zoe's best friend Tara so Mariana goes to Cambridge to support Zoe um and is kind of starting to investigate so the night before Tara died she told Zoe that um her professor threatened to kill her because they were having an affair um but the professor has an alibi of these girls that he calls the maidens who are like a special study group he has and they're like these really privileged beautiful girls of which Tara was part and so they've given him an alibi but Mariana isn't quite sure about this professor like she's a bit suspicious her niece seems to be keeping things from her and there's like another suspect who's in prison but Mariana doesn't think he did it and yeah we're just kind of investigating I've heard it uh compared to the secret history by Donna Tartt and I would say it's like a baby the secret history you know the idea of like a weird study group into like classics Mariana's actually Greek um and there's a lot of like ideas around Greek mythology in here so when her husband died they were in Greece visiting um the temple of Persephone and Demeter and Persephone was known as the maiden and yeah so it's kind of like imbued with all of this classic stuff and yeah I, I like that I like that it's at university that there's these weird secret history-esque things going on I think it's a, a really interesting setting I think a university is quite a good like closed space for a thriller to be in kind of limited pool of people and a lot of like secrets and history <laughs> secrets and history I was actually going to say that anyway but like the secret history like you know there's a lot of links between all these characters because Mariana also went to Cambridge um and it's interesting that she's a psychotherapist um a therapist and yeah, it's just very, like I say, engrossing, very compelling. Um, there's all this stuff that I want answers to about like the professor, about Zoe, about Tara, just like weird characters, which I'm enjoying. I'm keen to keep reading. Um, it's like 350 pages long, but like I say, I've been flying through it. So yes, I am enjoying it. It's giving me the good thrillery vibes that I was feeling the need for and that I enjoy. So I'm gonna keep reading it now. I'm now 250 pages through i really can't speak today through um the maidens and still really enjoying it um i can give like a fuller update later maybe but i mean they're very much implying that like this one person has done it this one character like everything's coming together but still got 100 pages left so i'm always a bit suspicious but i don't know if it'll be like there'll be a big twist and it wasn't that character or if it'll just be more about like the whys and the hows and the have whats and the where ins and the therefore ever afters um but yeah we're getting our friends coming around to the yard and we're getting like this really nice pizza well i think it's nice i've never had it before but a new pizza place opened up in the village it's all like fancy so they are picking up the pizza and coming and i'm excited i'm getting salami and honey chili which i just think sounds delicious look at that mm. Hello guys, um, we are in the car because we, I think I mentioned we're going camping today up in um, Northumberland and it's actually a really nice day but we got um, about like halfway there and Alex was like oh I was going to bring the like beach blanket um, but I forgot like oh well and I was like oh well and then I was like you did bring the chairs though and then he was like no um, so we're going to have nothing to sit on so we've come to Aldi in Annick in the hopes that we can get some chairs from there fingers crossed but yeah i'm really excited to go camping like i say the weather's nice it's like a really beautiful beach campsite kind of thing like the campsite's right next to the beach and like loads of our friends are going and it's just going to be a really nice day and night i yeah so i last night after before we had pizza i'd said i'd got up to the 250 page mark in the maidens i haven't read any more i have brought it with me i doubt i'll do any reading really like today but um in the car back tomorrow i'd like to finish it off um but i don't think i've really updated you hugely about getting to the 250 page mark it's clearly looking like it's gonna go one way with who it is and to be fair actually then i remember that the whole book like starts like the very first line of the book it's like by saying i know this character did it i just don't know how to prove it so i guess maybe the point is that it is that character and there isn't going to be like a twist but then I've heard a couple of people reviewing this book and said like oh it's got a really good twist and we definitely haven't had anything like remotely twisty so far I wouldn't say just being like good gripping interesting weird characters I like how many 
odd characters there are who kind of just like crop up and like feel suspicious particularly the men in the book um yeah there's just like a lot of men who i'm like mm, you could easily be deeply suspicious but what like only one of you will betray me tonight i imagine the rest of them are just going to be innocent and creepy and one will actually be creepy and murderous but i'm enjoying it uh definitely looking forward to seeing how it wraps up and it's just such an easy thing to fall into like it's it's well written but it's just like ah nice soothing murder graphic murder yeah i don't know why but you know what i mean a thriller is just sometimes so easy to read well guys things have oh is that focused things have just simply been going from bad to worse so we managed to get chairs at Aldi. That was all good, although someone wasn't happy about the price point. Um, 18 pounds <laughs> each. Each. <laughs> and then Alex like, said he drove the wrong way. So then we had to like drive for a bit before we could turn around. And then we got to the co-op, which is like super, super close to the campsite because we needed to buy like all our drink and food and like I needed to buy like sun cream and stuff. Got there and it was closed and they just had like a pop-up shop which had like three items in. So we were just like, you're kidding. So then we had to drive like away from the campsite to the next town and let me just tell you that Sea Houses Co-op is an absolute nightmare. Worst co-op I've ever been in my life. But, however, it meant that we drove, we drove past, like, Bambra Actual. I'm a bit far away for the camera to pick it up. But, um, and Bambra Castle is, like, a very stunning. Um, I mean, all the scenery around here, like, that's the beach. It's pretty stunning um no sign of harrison ford i don't know why i'm still like recording that from really far away yeah no sign of harrison harrison ford unfortunately um but yeah we're finally on our way now ready to actually start camping it was also really cold in sea houses but it looks sunny here so yeah It is now Monday. I had such a good time camping. It was honestly so fun. The weather was amazing. Um, I can't remember how much I filmed, but yeah, we just kind of like had a barbecue and we were playing rounders on the beach and the beach is absolutely gorgeous. I'm pretty sure I did film that and did a pinata and yeah, made a bonfire on the beach and then we stayed up and watched the sun rise at like half four in the morning. I'll put a picture of that in there because it was stunning. Um, so yeah, had a great time. But then yesterday drove back we are both very tired and then we had to watch, had to, then we watched the football because England won, it's coming home, etc, etc. And then I did finish The Maidens but forgot to tell you about it last night. So that's what I'm going to do now. I finished The Maidens and I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was like very fun and very pacey. And I think it did like a pretty good job of being like quite evocative and creepy. To me, I felt like this book needed to be... Oh, not needed to be longer like I think everything was well paced like I say but I don't know it just felt like I wasn't reading it for very long and maybe that was just because I was racing through it like it is 350 pages although the writing's like fairly big because it's a hardback but I just feel like I wanted even more like setting and you know really making me feel like I was at Cambridge and even more red herrings or like exploration into these side characters who aren't necessarily going to be it but who really added to the tension but that aside that's just like a personal thing I guess you know I love a long thriller and I feel like it's kind of a compliment because I think the seeds of that really great kind of super immersive literary thriller were potentially in there um, but it wasn't just quite as like long or maybe didn't go quite as deep enough as I would like but as a like quick fun thriller then I think this was really really successful. There was a twist and I thought it was a really good twist. I did not see it coming until like a couple of pages before and then I but even then, I was like, no, no, it won't be that. And then when I read it on the page, I did a little, like, gasp, which is when you know it's a good twist. I think I liked how dark the twist went. I think it was really clever because, yeah, you weren't really... You were kind of expecting the twist to come from somewhere else and be about... Well, I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, I think it was a really good twist, very smart. Really solid thriller with a good twist, good setting, um, and I really enjoyed it. I'd probably give it a four. I feel like at the minute I'm giving every good thriller four stars but I mean no complaints so yeah 
that was Le Maidens. And now we are at the end of the vlog. As I say, it's Monday morning. I'm off to get my vaccine, which I'm very excited about going for that in like 10 minutes. Um, but thank you so much for watching this video of me talking about books that are out this month. I definitely think they're all worth picking up if they sound interesting to you. As I say, I was quite harsh on Animal because I really wanted it to be like so amazing, but it was still like a really easy to read, interesting book, like perfect for like a holiday read. Um, I also think Star Wife would be really, good. in fact, they're all really good holiday kind of books because this is a little bit breezier, but still smart and just quite easy to read. And then The Maidens, we all love a thriller on holiday, right? Please do let me know if you'll be picking any of them up, if you've already read them, what you thought about them. I would love to know. Obviously, I would love if you subscribe. My Instagram, my storygraph will be linked down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.